The Intel Core i7-2600K was first released in the first quarter of 2011, featuring four cores, 3.4 GHz base frequency and 3.8 max turbo frequency. It quickly became a popular choice among PC enthusiasts for a number of years. However, it's been almost an entire decade since this great piece of silicon was released and modern gaming has evolved at an extremely rapid pace. Which begs the question, can you play modern games on a decade-old CPU? Now, the 2600K has been long discontinued, and more modern CPUs with newer architecture just blow it out of the water. Especially the resurgence of AMD's CPUs in the last several years, which have finally given Intel a run for their money. If the topic of this video revolved around editing, there really wouldn't be any kind of comparison. However, although modern gaming has also evolved, its reliance on a powerful CPU with multiple cores and advanced hyper-threading hasn't really started to become a big factor, although it soon will, especially with some of the newer games about to be released. Now, I've managed to get my hands on an Intel 2600K, which until a few days ago was being used in a home PC mainly to browse the web and read emails. I had the exact same CPU in my first ever gaming rig in 2011 and used it up until 2015 where I upgraded to a 3790K. I wanted to push the 2600K to its limits and see how it would perform on modern games. I found an old LGA 1155 motherboard, 8 gigs of RAM and a stock Intel cooler that came with the original CPU in 2011. I set the whole thing up on my state of the art test bench, an old motherboard box and used an SSD as my boot drive containing a few modern games. Surprisingly, I was able to reinstall Windows from scratch without any issues, and all the drivers worked flawlessly. The GPU of choice for this experiment is my MSI GTX 1080, and like almost any gaming-related test, the GPU power and capability will have the most influence on your gaming performance. Now, just a quick note before getting into the benchmarks, Bear in mind this system is using only 8 gigs of a decade old RAM. I won't go into RAM requirements too much in this video, but it's been proven multiple times that 16 gigabytes is the sweet spot. Another limitation is that we're merely using the stock heatsink cooler that came with the CPU back in 2011. Although I didn't expect the 2600K to get too hot as it's a relatively cool chip, the limitation is still there. In these benchmarks, my aim was to achieve at least 60 frames per second at the highest possible graphical settings. My methodology was to begin each test at ultra settings and slowly lower the graphical settings until each game was hitting at least 60 FPS. I tested the games both at 1080p and 1440p using the exact same graphical settings. Starting off with a very recent release, I tested Valorant at 1080p and 1440p, and both tests were at the maximum possible graphical settings. I was surprised at how well optimized Valorant is, and its similarity to Counter-Strike GO. And just like CSGO, the system was able to push very high frame rates and averaged around 153.7 FPS at 1080p, with a min of 89 and a max of 201. Bumping up the resolution to 1440p of course decreased the FPS, but not by a whole lot. The average dipped to 145.5 with a min of 81 and a max of 200. This just goes to show how optimized the Valorant is and that you don't need a super powerful PC to play the game. I didn't expect the 2600K to have issues with this game, but it's still pleasing to see that it can max out the FPS limit of most modern gaming monitors at 144Hz. Switching it up a bit, let's look at one of the most graphics intensive games in recent history, and that is Metro Exodus. Fans of the series will remember the first few titles as being fairly unoptimized and bringing even the most powerful PCs to their knees. Exodus is probably one of the most optimized games on the series to date though, and it does show. At full ultra settings, the 2600K was able to push an average of 73.5 FPS at 1080p with a min of 50 and a high of 100. Moving up to 1440p, the average FPS decreased to 62.7 with a min of 37. This is an incredible result for what is a relatively demanding modern game. Moving on to Escape from Tarkov, which is another game that has had optimization issues. Although the most recent update, Wipe, has resolved some of this, 
I decided to benchmark on the woods map, which contains a lot of trees, foliage, and draw distance rendering. Starting at 1080p with medium high settings, I was able to achieve an average of 93 FPS with a min of 65 and a max of 118. At 1440p, the average FPS hit 79.6 with a min of 65 and a max of 95. Next is the gaming benchmark favorite, which is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At ultra settings, the 2600K was able to hit 89.4 average FPS at 1080p with a min of 78 and a max of 105. At 1440p, I was just able to hit a sustainable 60 FPS at the exact same ultra settings, this time with an average of 63.1, a min of 56 and a max of 78. This really is such a great looking game and it's incredible to play at 1440p Ultra, even more so when you realize the CPU is almost a decade old. Finally, I decided to try Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and I used to play this quite a bit and during its early stages it was very unoptimized, just like the Metro series. The optimization was improved through subsequent updates allowing the 1080p average FPS at ultra settings with the 2600K to reach 100.3 with a min of 66 and a max of 136. Similarly, the 1440p resolution output 86.4 average FPS with a min of 59 and a max of 113. Note PUBG has improved greatly, but I still do get some screen tearing and big FPS dips, which is apparent in the big delta between the average FPS and min FPS of almost a 50% difference. So there you have it, the Intel Core i7-2600K is more than capable of playing popular modern games in 2020. Despite a decade age difference and countless advancements in the gaming sector, not only can it merely play the games, but it consistently achieves a minimum 60 FPS, often higher in the low hundreds at high or even ultra settings. So what does this mean in a practical sense? Well, if you still somehow have a gaming rig from 2011 with a 2600K in it, and you're happy with playing modern games at 60 FPS, I don't really see any reason to upgrade right now. You will of course see a somewhat noticeable FPS boost by using modern CPUs, but the best bang for your buck, as always, will be saving the money and putting it towards a more powerful GPU. That being said, you'll find in the next few months, newly released games will start to take advantage of the more modern CPUs and their increased cores, threads, and the new PCI 4.0 architecture for GPUs and SSDs. So your trusty old 2600K may be finding its retirement is finally coming up. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any comments, leave them below. I do try to respond to all of them. But apart from that, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.